Welcome to Japanese from Zero. We are on course two, and this is the last lesson of the entire book, and I am very proud that you got this far. I hope sincerely that you did watch every video up through the course, and you have gone through the lessons, and you've taken the quizzes, and you actually can read and write hiragana and katakana, because it's a milestone. I'm very happy. Today we're doing lesson 12, and this is the last time that we'll have this graphic displaying. I've already prepared the course three graphic. Woo. Today's topic is inexact time references. Uh, we know how to do exact time references like one o'clock, two o'clock, but we don't know how to say uh, we don't know how to say about two o'clock or around three o'clock. So that's what we're gonna do. And at this point, you learned the unique katakana compounds: t, d, va, stuff like that, fa, fi, fe, stuff that doesn't exist in hiragana. You can still write it in hiragana. You can. But it's typically katakana because these sounds don't exist in Japanese. They're used for foreign origin words. We already know this though because we went through the lesson, right? All right, uh, there is a lot of words in this lesson, but we're going to just go through a few that we're going to possibly use here or that are more important than the others. So, for example, nanjikan. Nanjikan desu ka? How many hours? Nanjikan desu ka? Hey, I'm sorry, sir, you're going to have to wait. You're going to have to wait a couple hours. Nanjikan desu ka? Okay. Uh, nanpun, how many minutes? Nanpun, nanpun desu ka? How many minutes? Uh, there were some good verbs in this lesson. Neru, to sleep, neru. Neru is an iru eru verb, which means iru eru drop the ru. So if you want to say, I will sleep, you say, nemas. I'm not going to sleep, nemasen. And okiru, okiru is also an iru eru verb, and it means to wake up. Convenient that sleeping and waking up are both iru edu verbs. All right, uh, and then the main thing in this lesson, the main part of this video that we're going to be talking about is goro and kurai. So they both in English mean about or around. They make a time or a specific amount to be fuzzy. Okay, it's not an exact time anymore. But goro is used for times and kurai, times meaning like January or Monday or uh or three o'clock, but gurai is used for amounts, and it's not limited to time amounts, it's for any kind of amount. Although, we'll talk about something in a second. Japanese kind of mix it up every now and then. Uh, officially, they're not supposed to. Uh, and then we covered this in, 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 a, in a lesson where we learned mo, which was I think lesson six. I made a special part of the video to talk about mada because I thought, wow, we didn't teach it. Turns out we were teaching it in a future lesson. This is the lesson where it's taught. Uh, so, mada means still or not yet. And another verb, okureru, which also very coincidentally is an iru edu verb to mean uh, to be late, which is something I used to do a lot. Now that I don't work for anybody, I'm never late. I'm always on time for when I want to start. All right, so let's let's just kind of review a little bit about what mada does because we didn't cover all aspects of it. We're going to talk about using mada with uh, exact reference, uh, with positive time. Uh, Scratch what I just said. We're going to use mada, mad, mada. We're going to use mada with positive things first. So, for example, you throw it in the beginning of the sentence, mada Tokyo ni imas. Mada Tokyo ni imas. I'm still in Tokyo. Or, depending on the con, uh, the uh, context, maybe you're talking about where. Hey, where's your girlfriend? Ah, mada Tokyo ni imas. She is still in Tokyo. Hey, where's your family? Mada Tokyo ni imas. They are in. Tokyo. Hey, where's your cat? Mada Tokyo Nimas. It's still in Tokyo. Uh, okay, we're going to learn on kind of a new concept in this next one. I'm kind of cheating and teaching ahead of something. But, Mada watashi no koto ga suki desu ka? Now, we know everything in here but the no koto. And it's typical that Japanese people, instead of saying, Watashi ga suki desu ka? Do you like me? They say, Do you like about me? And that's what no koto does. No koto means about. Okay, so they're really saying, Do you like me? That's what it translates in English. But in Japanese, they're saying, do you like about me? Do you... It's just a way that they say it. So if you're asking somebody, do you still like me? Mada watashi no koto ga suki desu ka? You would use no koto. Rosu wa mada atsui desu ka? Maybe you're getting ready to go to Los Angeles. And the short version of Los Angeles for Japanese people is rosu. And they use it all the time. So are you... Uh, is Los Angeles still hot? It was hot the other day. Rosu wa mada atsui desu ka? Is it still hot? Has the condition not changed? Uh, let's say you told your friend you're learning Japanese. 
and you said to him, oh, it's so fun, tanoshii desu, tanoshii desu, and he's like, it's gonna get harder, ah, it's gonna get harder, oh, and you're like, I don't know, still pretty good, but he asks you, he says, hey, is Japanese still fun? How would you say that? Nihongo wa mada tanoshii desu ka? You could say, mada nihongo wa tanoshii desu ka? It, to me, it doesn't feel nice there. I just don't know why. It just feels better to have it a little bit further in. But Nihongo wa, meaning here's the topic, and what about it? Is it still fun? That's why to me it sounds better to have it after the wa. Nihongo wa mada tanoshii desu ka? You can use mada for a whole bunch of things. You can say, for example, is it still 3 o'clock? Mada sanji desu ka? Is it still 3 o'clock? Uh, is it still... Anything you want to say in English. Is it still... Uh, is it still cold? Mada tsumetai desu ka? Hai, mada tsumetai desu. Yes, it's still cold. All right, now let's do mada with negative. This is what we already covered. We already covered this in lesson six, not officially, but in videos. So I'm going to take, it's close to the same sentence, but I'm just going to change the verb to negative and we'll see what it changes to. Mada tokyo ni imasen. Now the first one, mada Tokyo ni imas means I'm still in Tokyo, but now we're saying I'm not in Tokyo yet. The, the word is the same in Japanese, but in English, it would not make sense to say uh, I'm not in Tokyo still. But you could say I'm still not in Tokyo. The order of the English sentence has to change, but the concept's the same. This sentence, mada Tokyo ni imasen means I'm not in Tokyo yet, or I'm still not in Tokyo. For some reason, maybe you're on your way, uh, the plane was delayed, uh, the train had an accident, you're waiting on the train, and people are waiting for you at your destination, and they say, where are you? And you could say, mada Tokyo ni imasen. Not in Tokyo yet. Or you could have said, mada densha no naka ni imas. I'm still inside the train. Mada hikoki no naka desu. I'm still on the airplane, inside the airplane. All right? What if when you asked the person, do you still like me? Mada watashi no koto ga suki desu ka? They said, I still don't like you. I still don't like you. Granted, that's a weird thing, right? They would probably just say no or yes. But how would you say, I still don't like you? We have to use what we learned up here, the no koto. Mada anata no koto ga suki janai desu. Mada, not yet. Anata no koto ga suki janai desu. Still don't like you. Okay? Now, up here we had, Rosu wa mada atsui desu ka? Is Los Angeles still hot, right? But this is kind of a different thing. Rosu wa mada atsukunai desu. What does that mean? It means Los Angeles is cold still, right? It's not hot yet. Rosu wa mada atsukunai desu. Remember, English can have two. There's no one word that means still and one word that means yet because in English we could do both and you can use mada with positive and negative, right? So this sentence can be two different things. It can be, I mean, the exact same thing but two different sentences in English, right? It's still not hot in Los Angeles and it's not yet hot in Los Angeles, right? It's not hot yet and it's still not hot. The yet comes at the end or the still comes at the beginning. Same thing. All right. Let's say you're making meat. You're, you're, you're seasoning meat uh, that you're going to cook. Maybe you're making some big hamburger patties and you're adding all of this seasoning. And you want to ask a friend, hey, I put some new stuff in. And they're, they're, they're constantly, you're cooking a little piece off and you're having them try it out. And you want to say, you're like, how is it? How is it? And they could say, Kono niku wa mada oishiku nai desu. Kono niku wa oishiku, mada oishiku nai desu. This meat, it still doesn't taste good. Like you got more work to do. All right, now let's talk about time. Hopefully you understand mother. The main goal of this video is time, not mada, but it's part of the lesson. So time plus goro makes it become about this time. For example, you could say, about what time? Nanji goro, nanji goro desu ka? About what time will it be? Nanji goro desu ka? It does, that doesn't mean about what time is it right now. You would just say, ima nanji desu ka, what time is it? You wouldn't say, about what time is it? This is about what time is something going to happen. Like, hey, my friends are coming over. Nanji goro? Nanji goro desu ka? Around what time? You could also say, itsu goro? Around when? About when? We don't really say this in English. We don't, I don't think we typically say around when. 
Actually, we do. Around when we be coming, we say that. About six, Rokuji Goro. Just throw Goro right after the time. If you had a full time, you could say Rokuji Han Goro. Rokuji Nijupun Goro. Okay? What if it's around March? Sometime around March. Sangatsu Goro. Sangatsu Goro. That's about the time I'm going to go to Japan. Sangatsu Goro ni Nihon ni ikimasu. Because my Chinese classes will be ending and I can go have fun in Japan and meet all of my. I'm making a lot of new friends. On Hello Talk, I really haven't been talking with Japanese people until very recently. On Hello Talk, I've been talking to Koreans and Chinese people because that's what I was focusing on. But I've made some really cool friends. And I highly, if you haven't used Hello Talk yet, go download it. It's excellent. And make sure you fill out your information, post your self introduction, say all the Japanese you think you need to say in a, in a recording on your self introduction, and then start talking to people. There are a lot of great people on Hello Talk. There are some trolls. They, they are. But they're very rare. I rarely come up. I've been a couple I had to block. Uh, so, uh, I will be going to Japan in around March. Sangatsukoro, Nihon ni ikimasu. Now, amounts plus gurai. This means about a certain amount. You can never say amount goro. Just never can do it. Nanpun gurai means about how many minutes? You could never say nanpun goro. If you said nanpun goro, which by the way, you can say that. Now it means around what minute on the clock? Like, like, there's, well, about like, hey, we're going to be done in a few minutes. And I could say nanpun goro. That means what time, around what time, but only the minute part of the time. Okay. That's an exception. I don't know if it's an exception, but that's, you might hear that. But when you say nanpun gurai, it doesn't care about the time on the clock. It just means about how many minutes. For example, juppun gurai. Juppun gurai. Nanpun gurai desu ka? Hey, you're going to have to wait a little bit. Nanpun gurai desu ka? About how many minutes? I'll be done soon. Nanpun goro desu ka? About what minute on the clock for goro there. But that's not going to be as common as nanpun gurai. Juppun gurai desu. It's about 10 minutes. Now, we can use this for any counter word. Okay, so we learned way back in course one how to count generic items, and that's itsutsu means five things. Itsutsu gurai, about five. Like, how many apples do you want? Itsutsu gurai, about five. Uh, how many uh, drinks do you want? Itsutsu gurai. Now, of course, there are better counters for apples. Probably iko niko is better for, for apples, and probably uh, for bottles of things, ippon nihon is better. So we could say, gohon gurai, about five. Or goko gurai, about five small round objects. What if you're playing Pokemon and everywhere you went there were Pidgeys only, which happens. Pidgeys and Rattatas, tons of those. About how many were there? Nan piki gurai imashita ka? What if there was about a hundred? A hundred Pidgeys! Pidgeys everywhere! Everywhere! Hyap piki. Now we never officially learned. Hyappiki, but you can't say hyakuhiki, it's hyappiki to a hundred. So there's about a hundred. Hyappiki gurai imashita. All right, let's do some sentences. All right, how would you say, you have a friend coming over and you're trying to plan when to order the pizza. So we say, hey, around what time are you coming? I just heard like a bird chirp. Oh, there literally is a bird chirping outside. Uh, I, forgot, I forgot what we did before. There was something about... What was that sound? Ima no oto wa nan deshita ka? Alright. Alright, so how would you say, around what time is your... Uh, around what time are you coming? Nanji goro ni... Nanji goro ni kimasu ka? Now, the ni often gets dropped. But because it's a time, you put the time marker after it. It's an... It's not a... Uh, an exact time, but it's a time around like because normally you'd say nanji ni kimasu ka? At what time are you coming? Now we're saying at around what time are you coming? Nanji goro ni kimasu ka? But sometimes we'll drop it. Say, nanji goro kimasu ka? What if you're gonna be coming? You're gonna be there. I'm gonna be there around five. I'm gonna be there. Be there around five. Because we don't know how to say arrive yet. That's why I chose be there. Because if we said ikimasu. I'm going to go around 5. That would mean you're leaving your place, but you want to let them know that you'll be there at 5. We don't know arrive yet. You might know it, but they don't. 
people that are following the lessons know. So how do you say? Goji goro ni imasu. Goji goro ni imasu. I'll be there around five. And by the way, the verb to arrive is tsuku, tsuku. And because it doesn't end in a ru, we know it's a regular verb, right? So tsukimasu. I will arrive. Goji goro ni tsukimasu. I will arrive around five. That will not be on the test. How would you say? So we were asked a goro question. I can respond in gurai because I could say, oh, it's going to be about three hours. It's going to be about three more hours. Okay. Now we learned how to say more in another lesson. We haven't done it in the videos. I think it's lesson 10 uh, of. It's somewhere in course one, I believe. Ato sanjikan gurai desu. Ato, ato sanjikan gurai desu means about three more hours. When ato is combined with a counter, it means more. So, for example, if you want three more things, ato mitsu kudasai. Please give me three more. Uh, give me two more of these bottles of coffee. Ato nihon kudasai. Okay. All right. How would you say how many more? About how many more minutes will it be? About how many more minutes? Using ato, we just learned ato. So, how would you say that? About how many more minutes? Again, if you don't, if you don't say it out loud. Not that I can hear it anyway, but be true to your study habit, yeah? Don't say it in your head. Learning Japanese is all about speaking Japanese. So saying it in your head doesn't accomplish anything. Ato nanpun gurai desu ka? Ato nanpun gurai desu ka? About how many more minutes will it be? Uh, it's going to be about 15 more minutes. It's going to be about 15 more minutes. Shout, shout, let it on out. You're like in the coffee shop. Ato chugo hungurai desu! If you're in Japan, they're just gonna think you're crazy. In America, they'll think you're crazy, but they won't know what you're saying. Ato chugo hungurai desu. It will be about 15 more minutes. Maybe, maybe about 30 minutes. Dig deep into your brain. Do you remember what I say maybe? Alright, we have to learn a new word for the next sentence. Uh, because I felt I wanted to do the sentence and I wanted to teach the word too. The word is results. It's kekka. Ke little tsu ka. Kekka. So I want you to ask, around when will you know the kekka, the results? Around when will you know the results? Maybe Maybe your wife took a pregnancy test. Uh, maybe you took a test and the teacher's getting ready to announce the score results. These are all results. How would you say, around when will you know the results? Itsugoro kekka ga wakarimasu ka? You could have even said, kekka wa itsugoro wakarimasu ka? Either way would be fine. Itsugoro kekka ga wakarimasu ka? When will you know the results? Around when? Uh, I'll know at about 2 o'clock. I'll know at about 2 o'clock. How is that? Because remember, wakaru also means to know. Even though we have the verb shiru, it's not used here. Shiru is a different thing. You wouldn't say shirimasu ka here. Oh, actually, we don't know that verb yet. Sorry. We don't know that verb yet, but if you know any Japanese, you'll know that to know is also shiru. And there's a whole a whole thing when you're learning Japanese to know the difference between shiru and wakaru. And I do have a video on that, which is maybe linked below. Or it's coming up. All right. So how would you say? You'll know. I'll know around 2 o'clock. Niji goro ni wakarimasu. How would you say that informally? We haven't done any informal this time. Niji goro ni wakaru yo. Or niji goro ni wakaru. Um, it'll be, uh, so how would you say now? In about three hours. In about three more hours. In about three more hours. Ato sanjikan gurai desu. Ato sanjikan gurai desu. Alright, here's the last one. This is a big one. Oh, I should have, I, for, I forgot to, re you, you see it. What does this mean? What does, nanin gurai kimasu ka? 
何人ぐらい来ますか About how many people are coming? Okay, now, watch this sentence. We're going to use goro and gurai in the same sentence. I'm going to give you the English first, and I want you to see if you can do it. So, it's around three o'clock, about ten people are coming. And, second sentence, at four o'clock, about five people will come. Around three o'clock, ten, about ten people are coming. And at four o'clock, about five people are coming. Sanji Goro ni Junin Gurai Kimas. So ste Yoji ni wa. Now here we're saying Yoji ni wa. There's no Goro because I didn't say about four o'clock, I said at four o'clock. But I'm comparing 4 o'clock to 3 o'clock, so I'm putting emphasis. And at 4 o'clock, gonin grai kimasu. About five people will come. That's it. Hopefully, you were able to pass that final sentence. I'll see you all in the next Japanese from Zero, where the screen's going to turn green, and we're going to be talking about all the lessons in this book. Good job. And also, by the way, we finally get to learn kanji. I'm very excited about that. And that means that some of the stuff that is going to be in this future book. I will teach you in the videos. We'll learn together. I'll see you then. Bye bye.